Dr. Dancer here. Actually, yeah, don't call me that. I have no certifications or anything, but I do have some real world experience that can hopefully help a few people. Okay, so first things first, make sure you drink some water. Okay, so let's begin. This video might be the most important one I've made to date. This has been a deep struggle for me for years, and I finally figured it out around two years ago. If you have bipolar disorder, or if you know somebody who does, this video is for you. I know I have some people in my family with the condition, and I also have friends and loved ones with the condition as well. And I'd like every single one of them to not struggle and to live their life to its fullest. So yeah, you guessed it, today's topic is mostly about bipolar disorder, but you know, this can be advice for all types of mental health disorders. Because they really all, they really are all pretty similar and they all kind of stem from the same root issues. The advice that I will be giving you guys can help with not only bipolar disorder, but depression, anxiety, schizophrenia, which is a more serious version of bipolar disorder. I will be talking about things that you can do to decrease flare-ups, decrease your symptoms, and to just feel normal again without the side effects. For me, it was like a light switch moment. I just like felt normal again after doing some of these things I'm about to tell you. Having my body run on ketones instead of glucose was the game changer, and going into ketosis was the real light switch moment that my brain was actually starting to function normally again. You don't need to be strictly keto, but if you want the most relief, the fastest, I would recommend going on a ketogenic diet or a carnivore diet as soon as possible. Most people that do have bipolar disorder, they think that something's wrong with their brain. They think that their circulatory system isn't running properly. They think their, their neurotransmitters they think there's something wrong with their neurotransmitters, which is serotonin, neuroepinephrine, and dopamine. And there's been quite a bit of research shown that these thoughts aren't necessarily true, and it actually is a metabolic issue. And it's a disorder with how the brain processes glucose and insulin. Your brain, it's inflamed, and it's starving of ketones. So I'm gonna say this again, I'm not a doctor. Do not call me Dr. Dancer. <laughs> Talk with your medical professional. Talk with your doctor. Do not go off any drugs or medications. You can talk with your doctor about possibly tapering off these medications once you try one of these diets for a prolonged period of time, but do not stop your medications cold turkey. Do not taper off any medications without talking to your doctor. So for me, there was that light switch moment that I got instant relief and I was so grateful for that, but I didn't really feel perfectly normal um, like long term and didn't have these like swings of uh, depression and anxiety like all those things went away after probably a month I'd say a month and that's the short end I think a lot of people can it can be longer it can be two three months maybe even longer than that of being on one of these strict diets and completely tapering off their medications but yeah for me it took about a month to completely taper off my medications the withdrawal symptoms on these medications that I was taking and probably some of you guys are taking are very severe and likely they're actually the withdrawal symptoms are worse than the bipolar symptoms that you are experiencing. You know there's brain zaps, you can get like psychomotor agitation and some crazy bullshit can happen to you if you try to withdraw from medications. You can also go into status ellipticus which is a constant it's a constant seizure that doesn't stop so you really want to be careful with tapering off your medications talk with your doctor and your mental health provider don't just willy-dilly go off of them it's that's not a smart idea i think there are a lot of reasons why bipolar disorder can happen and where it stems from a lot of people used to think it stemmed from childhood trauma but more and more research is coming out that people believe that it actually stems from what you ate as a child and what your mom ate when you were in her womb. And it can also stem from how people tell you to eat. So if your parents have a certain belief 
and they can indoctrinate how you eat and your habits and it can work for your parents but sometimes it can't work for you. I do think that trauma from your childhood and adulthood can be a trigger for bipolar disorder but I don't think it's the whole story. There's so many different factors that can cause bipolar disorder. The genetic disease, the autoimmune condition that has so much stigma in today's society. Most doctors think that your brain can only run on glucose, but that simply is not true. Your brain can run just as effective, if not smoother, on ketones. A lot of doctors and researchers are coming to the conclusion that bipolar disorder and many other mental health disorders are caused by a disorder of the brain's ability to utilize glucose and insulin. And it can also be caused from chronic inflammation. And that chronic inflammation can be all over the body, but what we're focusing on right now is that chronic inflammation in your brain. So the thing is, if you have inflammation from a certain diet that you have been on for decades, years, then you likely, if you do have it anywhere in your body, you do also likely have it in your brain. And yeah, this chronic inflammation, it is caused from an improper diet or a diet that you have been told to eat. Mitochondrial dysfunction in your neurons is also a big player that can cause bipolar disorder. And this happens when the diet that you're eating is not properly fueling your mitochondria in your neurons. There's been tons of research that has came out recently, but also there's been research for decades now, but it's just now like hitting mainstream media that some of these diets can actually like really help symptoms or completely reverse symptoms of some mental health disorders. You can start these diets immediately and you can do so safely, talk with your doctor, but do not, do not stop taking any medications. Always talk to your doctor before you change anything with your medications. You can adopt a one ingredient whole food ketogenic diet or just a clean carnivore diet. There's tons of information out there that I will link below supporting these diets for helping bipolar disorder. I do think that you can drastically improve symptoms or put this disease into remission or you can even say cure the illness because at the end of the day I do think that a lot of people would agree with me that bipolar disorder is an autoimmune condition and these autoimmune conditions can be completely reversed. Your gut bacteria also plays a crucial role in your mental health. So things that can lessen your symptoms, just go on a diet that will promote good gut bacteria. Or if you want to go the lazy way, you can just add a good probiotic to your diet. These things will lessen your symptoms of bipolar disorder drastically. So, so you have to increase your omega-3 fatty acids in your diet. I'm not talking about ALAs from plants, I'm talking about EPAs and DHAs from animal-based foods. You can get that from egg yolks, pasture-raised, you can get it from fatty ocean fish, from butter. You can get all of the omega-3 fatty acids that you need from a diet. You do not need to supplement, but if you don't want to eat these things, which I would not recommend you not eat them, because it's just better, you can get the omega-3 fatty acids from fish oil. It's just not as readily available to be used in your body and in your brain. Make sure you're getting all your B vitamins. There's tons of B vitamins out there and you can get them all from red meat and from eggs. If you refuse to eat these foods, you can get all the nutrients from methylated B complex pills, but just get it from the damn food. Don't get it from pills, please. There is a mutation called MTHFR that I actually have. I tested for it and I came back that I did have it. It's a, your body doesn't properly utilize B vitamins in the brain correctly. And I do think that was a major player in how I developed bipolar disorder. And the things you can do for this is I have taken the methylated B complex before to get out of the rut that I was in. But over time, I just slowly well, not slowly, I actually just kind of dove right in. Just eat red meat, eat eggs, eat fatty fish, you know, eat all these, these healthy fats, and your brain, your body will thank you. Eliminate all the sugar from your diet, especially the processed sugar. 
you know you you can dabble with some berries here and there but too much natural sugar is also it can also be damaging so berries you know you should try to avoid blueberries there's a lot of sugar in those but raspberries blackberries those can be good you know apples they have tons of sugar in them unfortunately so those are really the two fruits that you can have and you can't really if you really want to like see benefits you really should try to stick to only those two berries and nothing more you know once you feel better you can start adding stuff again and see how you feel because you really want to like get rid of this inflammation and you want to start feeling better so you need to go strict at first and then you can start adding other fruits as you go and see how you feel and just you can change up your diet here and there depending on how you feel in the future you don't need to be strictly ketogenic your whole life don't feel like you have to do that because I know sure as hell I am not strictly ketogenic anymore I I eat whatever I want and feel I still feel normal and if I ever do feel not normal I know that I have to go on a strict diet again and I'm totally willing to do that if I can feel normal again you want to eliminate all grains from your diet whether that's wheat rice oats corn those are all full of starches and the starches they break down into sugar almost immediately if your brain has a problem metabolizing sugar or has an insulin problem or inflammation problem or a mitochondrial problem the sugar from the grains is gonna fuck you up it's gonna fuck up how your brain is fueled and how your brain runs you're gonna want to eliminate all vegetable seed oils canola corn soybean sunflower rapeseed oil these are all unnatural oils that humans have only been consuming for the past hundred years maybe longer than that but you get the idea you need to start consuming what our ancestors have been consuming for millions of years and that starts with butter beef tallow chicken fat ghee bacon grease if any fat is going to be recognized and used properly by your brain and by the mitochondria in your neurons it's going to be these fats bottom line you need to increase the amount of red meat you eat and eggs and none of that none of that egg white bullshit you want to eat the egg yolk the egg yolk is the most important part of the egg cholesterol heart disease from these foods total myth you do not need to worry about that the drugs that they use to treat bipolar disorder including damn the drugs used to treat mental health disorders including bipolar disorder they have a very narrow therapeutic window this means that you have to get the dosage exactly right to reap the benefits and feel normal and even if you are right in this therapeutic range you will likely still have some side effects and will still have to worry about going off the drugs eventually and having withdrawals it's very easy to not take enough and to not get any benefits and it's very easy to take too much and get horrible side effects a drug that I wish nobody would ever take is lithium it really really breaks down the body it breaks down your kidneys it breaks down the collagen in your skin and you age extremely fast and there are tons of other extreme side effects you just kind of feel like you're dying I know people who are on lithium and they have had nothing they have had nothing really good to say about it it has a lot of negative side effects if you must take some sort of lithium take lithium ortate it's naturally occurring in your body and your body can use it much more than lithium carbonate your body has to expel a bunch of the lithium carbonate and it's really taxing on the body and when you're taking a lot of medications a lot of things can change your therapeutic index stress in your life your current diet your sleep schedule if you're not getting enough sunlight if you're taking any other medications they can also change your therapeutic index and they can change how your medications work so other medications can swing your therapeutic index as well so medications you know they're they're really hard for you to be well long term you always have to like tweak something and change something and it's an ongoing process that can be very draining and taxing on your mind I think that uh, there is a use for medications and it's for when you're in a crisis and you really need help they can be there for you but it does take time to find that therapeutic index and if you just go on a diet for a little bit you can reap the rewards and drastically improve how you feel not to mention the side effects that can happen with some medications 
anti-seizure medications to treat bipolar disorder can sometimes be fatal. You know, you can have a seizure disorder from taking too much or not taking enough of the valproic acid. If you skip taking valproic acid for a certain amount of time, you can have something that's called status ellipticus. Not to mention, valproic acid can cause serious life-threatening pancreas disease. I know that when I was on these medications, there was blood like coming out of my mouth occasionally and I experienced some like severe like pain that was stemming from my pancreas. It was a deep severe sharp pain just like right in my upper left abdomen. It was not good and this pain didn't seem to go away unless I went off the medication. It really is like a never ending cycle of adding more medication and higher doses and it really never ends. You always have to go up a dose to get to your therapeutic range because your body will adapt to the medication and over time you will destroy your body. You will destroy your brain, you will destroy your organs with these pharmaceuticals. So the better option here, it's just changing your diet and then possibly going off the medication eventually but you must talk to your doctor before you change anything with your medications. I cannot stress that enough. This is a long video, I apologize, but I need to get all this information out there. If you are able to adopt one of these diets, carnivore or ketogenic, both of these can be very therapeutic and very clean diets. If you can decrease your bipolar symptoms with these diets and decrease or stop these medications with these diets, with the help of your doctor, please, <laughs> imagine the benefits of your overall quality of life and your mental health. If you're able to treat bipolar disorder, without pharmaceuticals, but with food. It's not just the foods that you add to your diet, it's also the foods that you remove from your diet. Just imagine the benefits that you will have from removing some of these drugs from your life. New research is being shown daily that a ketogenic diet improves the amount of therapeutic ketones that are in your blood supply and thus available for brain function, and that a ketogenic diet improves mitochondrial function, and then it also decreases the chronic inflammation all over your body, but in this case, yet again, I'm repeating myself, it is the chronic inflammation in your brain as well. Please check all the resources that I put in the description. I've put a lot of names in the description. All these names are, are mostly doctors that have helped me tremendously and have given me tons of information. And I genuinely thank them from the bottom of my heart. They are great people trying to help people and it's, it's really hard to find doctors out there that genuinely want to not have you come in and see them. They want you to not be a reoccurring customer, they want you to get well, and they want you to stay out of the doctor's office. And all these doctors below are those kind of doctors. We need more doctors like those people in the world. Have a talk with your doctor about switching up your diet, see how you feel, stick with the diet for at least a month Go longer if you can, and when you're ready, have that talk with your doctor about possibly decreasing and or tapering off the medication safely and seeing how you feel with this new diet. The brain is 60% made out of fat, so what does that tell you? It tells you you need to be eating a considerable amount of fat in your diet. Healthy fats, my diet right now consists of a lot of meat. You know, I try to do grass-fed ground beef mostly, and I'll splurge on a ribeye here and there. I try to go and get local ingredients, local beef. I really don't eat all that much chicken or pork. I really try to eat mostly beef, fish occasionally. I do eat four or five eggs every morning. And the whole thing with the cholesterol, you know, your body, it needs cholesterol. Your body produces cholesterol. Big Pharma, they're, they're telling you to avoid red meat, avoid eggs, avoid all this cholesterol and your body needs all these healthy fats to thrive. Like Big Pharma, they're telling you, they're telling you to eat sugars, they're telling you to eat all these seed oils, and it's just straight poison. It's poisoning your brain, it's causing neuroinflammation, causing disease and illness. Stick to Whole Foods, stick to local organic shops if you can, but chain grocery stores, they can have some good deals and you know, it doesn't differ too much in the, in the quality. Make sure to do pasture raised, try to do grass fed if you can, Pasture raised really is the only way. Cage free and free range, that's total BS. Look in the ingredients section if you're skeptical about something you're buying. You know, the other day I was looking at some ingredients for butter and there was vegetable glycerin in there. I think I saw like canola oil 
as well. Like, why are you putting that in butter? The only ingredients that should be in butter are milk, salt, and, and cream. So a lot of you are probably skeptical, you know, this crazy explorer dude who does crazy shit, he's giving all this advice. Why should I listen to him? I do know how I felt in the past and I do know how I feel now. And I do feel normal the way I did before I was diagnosed. I do feel that way now, I feel normal. So I will say that I do believe that I am in remission or I am cured from this illness. There's a terrible stigma out there and I really don't care what people think of me. If you think I'm crazy, if you think any different of me, I could care less. Because I know that that 18 year old me, he would have wanted to watch this video. He would have wanted an answer that could help him. I wish I could have given that advice to him earlier and hopefully this video, hopefully it reaches some people that it can help. Hopefully I can bring less suffering to the world with this video. Those medications that I was on, they were not helping me and they were slowly killing me. And luckily I was not on them for a very long time, but I wish I just didn't go on them at all. I found outlets in exploring and all the various activities that came with exploring. I chased adrenaline, I chased risk, and that helped me from not offing myself. If I didn't have these activities, I might have done it, but thank God I found a way to not always have to chase these highs. I can have moments to relax, have moments to calm myself down and be normal. I found a way to heal myself with diet. Food really is medicine, and people need to understand this. You aren't crazy. You are sick. You're just sick. There is hope for you. I believe that there are brilliant minds that have bipolar disorder and other mental conditions, such as Bobby Fischer, Kanye West, Selena Gomez, you know, some great artists, actors, some world champion chess players, possibly the most brilliant chess player of all time. It's so sad to see people who can change the world for good and make great art succumb to their mental disease. It's also so sad to see people numb themselves with medication. The world needs these people. The world needs people to push barriers and think differently. Everybody is all the same nowadays and it's boring. Peace and love guys. I'm gonna go jump in some frozen water now. It's cold as hell. You gotta get in though. You gotta suck it up. I'm gonna tap out. That shit's cold. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> oh. Ooh. Re energize. I feel fresh. I should have done this in the morning, but it's still, it's still great to just get out here and get in some cold water.